I'm going to show you how to build a simple app that shows nearby places, in this case restaurants like this. As you can see, the app also shows the locations on the Google Maps. When you click any of the markers, the info window pops up with more information. I have written an article about this as well, so you can check it out, the link in the description. The first step is going to be building the UI for the user input form. Here is my view project up and running and if you're not sure about how to get started with view, I have an article link in the description below as well. Okay, I have already created a component called closeby.view. So let's go ahead and create a route for it. In the router index.js file, import the component at the top, create a route object inside the route array. I'm using semantic UI CSS framework for this example to build a UI. So I have already added a CDN link for it inside the index.html file in the header section. You can grab the semantic UI CDN link in the description below as well. Okay, switch back to closeby.view component and create template tags and declare two column grid layout markup in it. In the first column on the left, I'm going to be adding the user input form and the places list. The second column on the right that has an attribute called ref is set to map, which is where I will be adding Google Maps view using that reference. Let's add the form element inside the first column. In there, I'm going to add markup for the input box. It has an input field and the icon, which will appear on the right side of the input field. Let's add a markup for the type and radius drop-down list. As you can see in the final app, they are sitting side by side. And here is the markup for that. The type has only one option, which is restaurant. This is because I am planning to get places that are only restaurants in this example. But there is a whole list of types available in the Google's documentation that you can use in your project. I have added the link in the description. Okay, the radius has four options from 5 kilometers to 20 kilometer, which is basically how far you want to get the nearby places from. Finally, I'm going to add a button called Find Close By that has a few semantic UI classes. And the view is looking good. The second step is to define some properties and functions and bind them to the view template. So after the ending template tag, create a script tag with an export default object. Inside the data model, define two properties, type and radius. Then bind those properties to the corresponding views. Next, attach a click event to the icon on the right side of the input field with the callback function called locator button pressed. Inside this callback function, I'm going to get the user's location in the form of latitude and longitude using HTML5 geolocation API. To get the location, all I have to do is to call the getCurrentPosition method on the geolocation object. This takes a couple of arguments that are success and error callback error function. The position object parameter in the success callback function will have information about the location including geographic coordinates. So declare two properties in the data model called lat and long with the initial values of zero. Then inside the success callback function, assign the values to the properties. It would be nice if we show the coordinates in the input field. To do that, create a computer property called coordinates returning latitude and longitude values separated by a comma. Then bind this property to the input field. Let's see that in action and it works. If you prefer to see the actual address rather than the coordinates in the input field, you can do that using Google's geocoding API. I have written an article about it and you can see the link for it in the description below. Now add a click event listener to find close by button with a callback function called find close by button pressed and declare it in the methods object. This is where I'm going to make an HTTP request to nearby search request, which is a part of Google places API. Nearby search request lets us to get nearby places based on location, type and radius. 
I'm going to be using Axios to make an HTTP request. So in the terminal, install Axios by running this command, npm install dash dash save Axios. Once the Axios is installed, import it at the top. Then come back to the find close by button pressed function and invoke get method on the Axios object and pass the URL as an argument. Let's define the URL constant with a nearby search request base URL, like so. To get this working, it needs four required query parameters that are location, type, radius, and API key. Now you can see I have injected the parameter values in the URL string using the string interpolation. The last one is the API key that you can get it from Google Cloud Console. If you're not sure about the API key, find the link in the description below that shows how to get that. Okay, as you can see, I have also multiplied the radius value by thousand. This is because the nearby search only takes radius in a meters unit and this will return a promise. So add then and error methods with arrow callback functions. Let's see that in action to see if it works. And I got a course error. I also have a resource linked in the description if you want to know more about course error. To fix that, append proxy server link to the URL like so. And it works. Nice. Now we have places data. Let's display them on the left column in a list format. The first step is to create a property called places in the data model and set its value to an empty array for now. Then go to find close by button pressed function, assign the response to the places array using response.data.results. Now we have data. Let's add the markup. After the ending form tag, add the markup for a list item. Then loop through the places array using v4 directive inside the div that has item class. Finally, print place name and address. Let's test it out. And it works great as expected. Here is the more fun part, which is adding Google Maps on the screen. Let's call a function called this dot add locations to Google Maps where we get places in response from the HTTP request and declare it inside methods object. Inside the function, create an instance of the Google Maps map object. This takes two parameters. The first one is the DOM element where the map is going to appear. The second one is a JavaScript object that has three properties. The first one is zoom level. The second one center and it, its value to be a lat long object with the coordinates that we get from the user so that the map is centered based on the current location. The last one is map type. Okay, once the map object is created, look through the places array and get the latitude and longitude values of a place on each iteration. After that, create an instance of marker object with a JavaScript object as a parameter that has two properties, position and map. The value of the position would be the lat long object with coordinate values as an argument and the map where the markers are going to be pinned. Let's see that in action. And the markers are laid out as expected. The last thing we want to do is to show the info window when a marker is clicked. To do that, create an info window object outside of the places loop. Then Inside the loop, attach a click event to your marker object. In the callback function, let's add some content to the info window using setContent method. Finally, call open method on the info window object passing map and marker. That's it. Hop over to the browser and to see if that works. And it's working great. If you like this episode, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss any future videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a next video.